All right, so now in order to compile this program, so all you need to do is just select the project and then right click and then click on build project or you can also select the project and click on this build icon here let's compile the code so here you can see that under console you should be seeing these logs so here you can see that this is a compiler invoked by this id and by the way you need not to worry about installing cross compiler here so because all the build tools cross compilation tools everything is installed by the id Everything comes with ID, so you do not to install anything extra. So if you want to upgrade this compiler to the newer version, then you may have to change the compiler settings and that we'll see later. So but other than that, so I don't think you need to touch any compiler settings as of now. So this is a cross compiler that is ARM NUN EABI GCC, which is used to compile this source code for the target architecture. All right, so what is cross compilation? So cross compilation means uh, you actually compile a program with the intention of producing code for some other architecture. For example, uh, in this case, uh, we are using the cross compiler ARM NUN uh, EABI GCC. So this is a cross compiler, okay? And this cross compiler uh, runs on the host machine but it produces executable for different machine for example in this case the target machine is different uh, it is based on arm architecture so that's why a uh, compiler is called as a cross compiler when it runs on one architecture but it produces the code for different architecture so that compiler is called as cross compiler and the process is called as cross compilation so here, uh, the cross compiler actually produces uh, different types of uh, executables, okay, for the target. So these are all the uh, different executable types, like uh, .elf, .bin, .hex, okay. So .elf is a type of executable which stands for executable and linkable format. Uh, it's a type of executable uh, which is used for debugging, okay. So dot .bin and dot .hex are type of executables which are actually pure binary executables uh, which are used for productions, okay. Dot .elf is used during debugging. So suppose if you are giving an executable of your project to your customer, uh, then you should be giving dot .bin or dot .hex, not dot .elf, remember. Because ELF has all the information, all the debug information, and anyone can use ELF analyzers to, you know, to read what are the contents of the ELF, and they, they will come to know about the code implementation, everything, okay? So because there are tools uh, available to analyze .elf files and they can disassemble the code and they can get the information about the project, okay? In this course, we'll be using .elf format because in this course, we'll be debugging our code on the target, isn't it? So debugging uh, is not possible if you use .bin or .hex. As I said, those are pure binary files and those are used during production, okay? And what is native compilation? So native compiler means the compiler runs on a host machine and produces executable, which also runs on the same machine, okay? So this process is called as native compilation, All right? So, so far, whatever uh, the uh, code we wrote for our uh, PC, that is actually native compilation, okay? Let's move forward. So here we actually got .elf of Hello World project. After that, we have to now load this project into our target. So now for that, you have to first connect the target to your machine. I'm going to connect the target to my machine. And after that, just right click here and go to debug as and click on debug configurations. So here, just double click on this STM32MCU debugging. So it creates a debug configuration here. And uh, the name, you can keep this as it is, no problem. So it actually tries to load this file that is .elf, which is created during the compilation, which is right here. And so don't change anything here. Go to debugger and here you should be selecting stlink gdb server so it also has option for open ocd but we'll be using stlink 
So here and after that interface is SWD and after that here is an option for serial wire viewer. So just enable that and after that core clock is 16 megahertz so you can keep that and after that SWO clock which is default to 2000 kilohertz and you can keep that no problem and after that you need not to do anything here in the startup also you need not to do anything just click on apply and after that you can click close and after that right click on this project and you can again go to the debug as and select this one stm32 mcu application the ide will load the project into the target hardware and it will switch into the debug perspective the ide is asking you to change the perspective into debug perspective so for that you can click switch so here you can see that the code is loaded onto the target and the execution is stopped at the very first instruction of the main function this is what IDEs usually do. So they will halt the execution at the first instruction of the main. The processor is halted. So because the ID is stopped here. Fine. So now how to see this printf. So for that what you have to do is go to window and then go to show view and then go to SWV that is serial wire viewer and then go to SWV ITM data console. So just click on that. So it will appear at the bottom here and here click on this configure trace and select the port 0. So just select this port and after that click on OK. Let's run the code. So to run the code at one go you had to click this resume button. Let's run the code. I'm going to click this. So actually you didn't see that message here. That's because you have to start the trace. So now let's reset the board. You can reset the board from ID itself. You need not to keep pressing the reset button of the board. So you can do that from here. Reset the chip and restart debug session. Let me reset. So now let's click on this start trace button here. This console is ready to accept data on the SWO pin. Let's hit run. Here it is. We got the message hello world. So what's happening here? So printf is going to standard library. From standard library it is coming to the write function and in the write function it is going to the ITM FIFO and from that ITM FIFO it is coming over SWO pin all the way back to the ID. And for any reason if you are not able to use SWV that is serial wire viewer then you can use semi hosting using open OCD debugger that I covered in the next lecture. So, so watch the next lecture only if you can't use this feature. I'll see you in the next lecture.